Welcome to CNC Learn and Build. I'm Randy Johnson. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to use the Shark RS1000 Pro CNC router table to cut a variety of joints using the built-in apps. The RS1000 Pro comes with over a dozen joinery apps, and you can find links to all of them in the description below this video. It's also worth pointing out that all of the apps use the same basic nine steps. And I'll cover each of them in detail. But I think you'll find once you become familiar with them that operating the RS1000 Pro is pretty straightforward. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the RS1000 Pro to cut a box joint. The first step, of course, is to install the bit. For this box joint, I'm using an up spiral quarter inch end mill. A one or two flute straight bit will also work. With the bit installed, open the settings screen and enter the bit diameter. There are a couple of places in the pendant where you can enter the bit diameter, but I prefer to enter it right away to avoid errors later. The diameter is also needed for the fence calibration, which is coming up shortly. Next, open the apps menu and select the touch plate calibration and then click on bit calibration. Click through to the white control button and use the buttons to lower the bit below the table. Now connect the magnet to the router bit or the collet. Touch the plate to the bit to verify that you have a good connection. Press OK to proceed with the bit calibration. The bit will rise up, touch the bottom of the plate, and then go back down below the table. You can now proceed to the fence calibration. Once again, use the white control button to open up the control panel and raise the bit above the table, as well as bring the fence forward. Use the touch plate on top of the bit to align the flutes square with the fence. This ensures that the high point of the flute is closest to the fence. This in return will give you the most accurate results when calibrating the fence. Position the plate between the fence and the bit and proceed with the fence calibration routine. From here, go back to the main menu and back off the fence so you can replace the insert ring. Now open the apps menu and go to the box joint app. Pressing run will open a list of parameters that must be set up. Starting at the bottom of the list, the first is the bit height. For the box joint, I typically set this a little greater than the thickness of my material. Next is the bit clearance. I find that 0.005 is a good place to start, 
since I can always go back and add more later if the fit is too tight. But if it's too loose, then I'll need to start over with new boards. Next up is the material width, which is three and a half in this case. Even though the bit diameter carries through from what I entered earlier, I always double check it here to make sure I entered it correctly. I'm now ready to run the parts. You can start with either part, but since the male part is next in the list, I'll start there to remain consistent with my process. Pressing OK positions the fence and the bit for the first cut. I'm using the optional miter fence to hold the parts on end, but a shot mate sled will also work. I've also added sandpaper to the fence to keep the parts from slipping during routing. The app automatically does the math to center the fingers on your materials, so the width of the first cut will vary depending on your material width and bit diameter. Click OK to advance the fence for the next cut. Notice how each opening is cut in two passes. The first pass is a full cut, and the next pass is a light cut. This second light pass is the clearance that was added during the setup, and it's only added to the male parts. Continue till all the fingers are cut for this part. Proceed to the next board for the female part of the box joint. Cutting these parts is done the same as the male part, except the fingers are offset and cut in a single pass, since the light clearance pass is not added to this part. With the part cut, I can test the fit, which proves to be too tight. I could go back and add some more clearance to the male part, but experience has shown me that just rerunning it at the same settings is often enough. Since it seems to take off just enough of the fuzz to ease the fit. Of course, this varies with wood species and router bits, but I prefer to sneak up on the fit rather than risk a loose fit. It's still a little snug, but since I can press it together with hand pressure, I'm going to accept it. A couple of things to keep in mind when you're using the box joint app. One, it's important that the ends of your boards are cut square and right flat on the table. And two, it's critical that your router fence and miter gauge run square with each other and with the table. Of course, this applies to almost all the apps, so don't hesitate to add some shims to the fence or miter gauge to make sure they run true. For videos on other RS-1000 joinery apps, check out the links in the description below this video.